Uh, Bortle here, back from the LCS 6 event. That's right, folks. Luxury Championship Series number 6 of the online format. And here today on the channel, Bortle Nation, we have first place, the winner of this event, the LCS 6 event, Zach. What's up, man? How's it feel to win this event? Um, it feels nice. Um, I I'd like to say I joined the club, um, but it, it was an online tournament. Um, it 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 I did hold it up to high regards as far as competitive, competitive it is. But, um, you know, we all want to win, like, the YCS or Nationals. So it, it, it is a good um, – it, it does feel good to win an LCS. And for those that don't know what LCS is, it's Luxury Championship Series. They actually um, have a Facebook group. You can check it out. And they host online tournaments um, just like the one I played in the, this past weekend. Oh, yeah, of course. And the cool thing is uh... – they had like over a hundred players, so on average, it's about like a regional size in the U.S. So there, there's a you know a handful of players, and a lot of them are very competitive uh, players as well. So that's really nice. Yes, yes. Um, there was big names playing in these tournaments. Um, I played a few of them. I played my friend Tommy Williams. I played my friend Chun Ping in top sixteen, and you you can recognize a lot more names when you go through the top cut list. So. Yeah, it was pretty stacked. Wow. Well, uh, peeking at this goo right here, there's pro there's a lot of questions, I guess. Uh, very interesting list overall. But before we jump into the deck profile, do you have any shout-outs, man? Yes. First and foremost, I want to shout-out my sponsor, Tim. Um, you can check him out on Instagram, Tim's Yugs, T-I-M-S-Y-U-G-S. He has been helping me, and I've known him since I was a kid, literally 15 years old, and I'm 25 now, so... It's a lot of uh, a lot of time spent um, playing the game, but he has been there and, and helped me out a lot. So check him out. He can get you any cards you need. He will work with you. Um, so big shout outs to him. Also shout outs to my Discord Duel Masters. Um, there there are my day ones for sure. Everyone in there, um, and most definitely big shout outs to my my homies Desi Trinell. Um, big shout out to Tommy Williams for convincing me to play um, certain cards in my deck lists. Uh, I'll, I'll go and mention uh, that later on. So, so yeah, I'm uh, I'm ready to begin. Okay, sweet. Well, without further ado, please take it away, man. I, I played only twelve monsters, um, three Ecclesias, two Fleur de Lis, and Maximus is my dogmatic lineup. Um, you don't play any less than three Ecclesia, and Fleur de Lis is like he is not good by himself. Um, you know, it best, uh, best he negates, um, and which is really good because it doesn't target. Um, but he is just able to push for 3,000 damage, or he can like clear monsters, and that's really good too, especially since he gives all the Dogmaticas a boost when any of them attack. Um, so it's really good. And the Maximus is, is pretty much there for um, the Shadal engine, as you can see in the. Uh, it's an online list, I'm, I'm sure. So uh, it, it's like an auto win uh, against combo when you go first to have Maximus. Um, and I didn't feel like you needed to main deck any more, nor play any other of the uh, Dogmatica monsters. I did feel like these were the best ones to play. And um, yeah. Uh, the rest of the monsters were just three Alistair and three Ash. Um, Alistair is, is standard. Uh, he is the defender of man. And Ash Blossom is the... Um, I felt like the hand trap that had the most utility. Um, being able to, to stop your opponent from drawing cards is just gives it more, like... Uh, has better... Um, it's more well-rounded against all the other matchups, whereas playing cards like Gamma and Valor, you know, they, they can have their, like, activation... But they're not as impactful. Real quick, though, about Maximus. Were you kind of nervous main decking this card? Because a lot of people were somewhat prepared in their extra deck for it. Yes and no. Um, I knew 100% that any combo player had no like no cards to worry about, like Nova and the Tis. Um, at worst, against the um, Infernoble Knight, they send Roland and Omega, which both have value and have utility in the graveyard. Um, I... I can understand, um, like, why people would say, like, oh, you don't want to main deck Maximus, you could just lose. But a lot of the times, um, if they have the Natis, or if they have... Um, I never ran into Nova. Like, I have yet to get Nova. So maybe that's the experience I want to say other players have had when they've used Maximus. 
there's a spell in my deck that um, can just have its you know activation requirement met because your opponent plays cards in the extra deck, and it's very strong. So um, I felt that Maximus as was as high risk as a high like you know high risk high reward type of thing. Like yeah, I can just lose the game if my opponent sends a Nova and chain blocks it and call called by the Great Bean at one stops you from negating like some cards. So so yeah, I, I did worry about it, but if I did not know what I was playing against, I was going to just use Maximus and and uh, just say better have it. <laughs> oh god, yes. Alright, you can take it away with the spells. Terraforming and Upstart. Um, they're both limited to one. Three Meltdown, three Nadir, three Invocation. Um, we just want to maximize the amount of Alistairs we play. And playing three Invocation um, was kind of just a catalyst because we did play three Desires. You don't want to banish all copies of Invocation and you don't want to banish all copies of Alistair. Um, the odds are low and I have had it happen to me still. So um, we, we want to maximize the, the amount of starters as... Um, we still also want to play like the maximum amount of uh, draw cards, and that's why we played the three talents as well. As I said before, um, if your opponent does have any hand traps, but they play like the Tiss or they they play other effects that trigger in the graveyard, like Herald, um, you you can just get your talent um, activation met, and you can just draw cards or look at their hand, and sometimes that can that can come in handy. Uh, Call by the Grave is also limited to one, and I felt that main decking it was better than uh, siding it. I, I wouldn't have played it at all if I didn't main deck it. And you kind of already explained your pot of desires, but did you uh, run into a moment to where it actually did hurt you? Like, did you hit any of these three of us, like all three of them? No, I not not online in the tournament. The only the only worry and the thing that did happen was banishing the Maximus or the Shadal Shism. It's worse to banish the trap than it is the Maximus. Um, because of the Nadir Servant, you have the option of getting it off first turn if you've opened up with Alistair. You you can put Alistair in the graveyard by boosting Makaba's attack, or you, if you negate a monster effect and discard it, um, that puts the other dark in there. That was the only thing that has like happened throughout the tournament. But if I resolve Desires, I'm I feel like I'm ahead, and that's that's good enough for me. So banishing the three of of Alistair and three of Invocation. So unlikely to happen, and I would play three desires all over again if even if it even if it did. Hey, it does say draw two, and uh, this uh, trap lineup you have, man, it's very interesting. You have your uh, triple impermanence, triple punishment, which that's a great card. Ice Dragon's Prison was just really nice, and this really one that stands out right here, um, Trap Trick at one. Man, what are your thoughts on that? Why, why'd you do this? Uh, I can explain the three punishment and the one trap trick. Is is so I have four copies of punishment in my deck. That card is amazing. Um, a lot of decks cannot play out of like punishment one interruption, and so if you end on Macamba punishment, that's like enough. Um, that that that's potentially three interruptions or two pops and then a gate. Being able to have that card is is really good. If you're not searching and if you're not searching it off Ecclesia, your opponent doesn't know it. Well, you know it, it's it's coming. Like they can't say for sure you have it. Ice Dragon's Prison was something I put in my deck. Very recently, I'd say just about a week ago, it, it was in my deck just to have an answer to Dragoon and Ultimate Conductor. Um, I, I lost too many games to Dinosaur that I felt I should not have lost, but Conductor Tyranno just goes, you know, burr. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. That card literally was in there for like a solid answer to either Tyranno and um, Dragoon because they put the uh, Dark Magician in the graveyard to have a Spellcaster target, plus most of your deck is Spellcasters anyway. But the card overall like performed well. Um, against the Mirror Match, I did a play where I reborn the Cyverse to banish his on-field Secure Gardener, and then I already left myself with no lights in graveyard, so he was forced to have a light, or he he also he just had Purgatrio in his extra deck, but if he didn't have Purgatrio, his invocation was not resolving, so I felt like that card is really good, and um, when used, when used like in um, in like its it, most profound moments, is summoning back monsters and like linking them away. Um, you don't have to banish anything either. You can just like reborn their monster. Yeah, that's that's a really good bonus uh, for that mm -hmm. card. And uh, the cool thing is, this was perfect like thirty nine cards because you're playing an upstart, so that's really nice. Yeah, that was like the last card in my deck essentially. Um, if I if I could play four punishment without playing trap trick, I think I would. So. 
I, I did side out trap trick a lot when I wasn't going first as well as the other uh, punishment. So that was uh, that was what I liked about it too. It was just an easy side out. And kind of speaking a little bit more about Maximus, um, every deck out there, we're required to play uh, 15 extra, you know, the maximum 15 extra deck space. So how did you fit everything in this extra deck? Like, uh, why did you decide this lineup right here? Playing a lot of matches and just having a lot of um, understanding what cards did, like, overall perform better than others is why I decided to not play Perga Trio is why I decided not to play Win Pegasus. Having answers to certain cards and having auto wins in your extra deck, I felt were um, more important than just having like more utility. Like the ability to summon Winda and auto win is um, just amazing against combo. And against certain rogue decks, if you summon BLS with a level seven or higher, they can't out it. It's game. I wanted to maximize that as well as keep the same amount of utility as the um as i as i possibly could so i kept the omega in there and i bumped natis up to two after cutting wind pegasus but titanic lad did not need to go up to two i never missed it you only need one in the deck um it, you usually win when you resolve that card did this fossil warrior skull knight ever come up plenty of times that card ultimately um lets you send something without having to immediately destroy uh, that like when it's sent so, so that lets you like have more flexibility in your in your options, and you don't need to you know send an Atis and pop something right away. If you're just gonna add Ecclesia, you can send the Fossil Warrior, add the Ecclesia, keep Natis in there for when you use Punishment to pop two cards. Say it's better than Wind Pegasus for sure. And uh, would you like to talk about your side deck choices? Yes, um, my side deck was something I wanted to uh, I. I Wanted to change after after the tournament for sure, but I, I played two Maximus, two Ogre, two Droll, uh, Panker Tops, three Cosmic, three Dark Ruler, one um, Harpy's Feather Duster, and one Red Reboot. Um, the limited cards are self-explanatory. Having having those like in anywhere in the deck, like in the side deck, is just good enough for me. They all they are all amazing. Um, I did feel that I could have just maybe sided one more Maximus and not sided two. Uh, it's searchable, plus you don't want to ever draw multiples. Ugh, um, it didn't happen, but it, it's just it's something that I don't want to do with the deck. Ogre was not sided in at all. I would definitely play Nibiru in over uh, the Ogres. I did not like Ogre, and um, I, I would want to change that for sure. Um, Droll and Lockbird, however, was really good. Droll is good against Dinos. It can be good against Infernable, and it can be good against Dragon Link. There are just... that They have... Some hands can just be super, like, more powerful to just play through Droll than others. And that's the only problem, is that Droll isn't, like, the best hand trap, like the end-all turns. But it can just end a turn. And I believe that it is more impactful than Gamma. I've, I've gotten comboed through Gamma too many times. Um, I feel like Droll and an Imperm or Droll and an Ash can, like, stop somebody's, like, turn completely, so... Uh, I would I would adjust this uh, side deck as three Droll and two Nibiru over one Maximus, the Ogres. Um, the Cosmic Cyclones could have been Lightning Storms, but overall I played against no Eldritch, and that's all I wanted them for. So I think it's, it was okay to just have them in there. The Dark Ruler No Mores were just an answer to like combo. I was questioned why not playing Purgatrio if I'm siding if I'm playing Dark Ruler in the side, and I was siding Purgatrio at one point. Um, but it has it, every time I dark rulered, I broke their board without Purgatrio, and it oh, was, wow. yeah. I just like if I resolve Dark Ruler, I, I I get them. The game's over, and I never needed it. Uh, I felt that I could have just played without it, and um, it, it, you know. And any time I went uh, I went second against Combo, I um, they either just couldn't combo like full, fully, or I I just lost. So Dark Ruler didn't even help me. Um, but it was just good enough to have in the side deck um, for for the times that they didn't end on like a like a full full board where they rip cards out of your hand, but they can end on a couple of negates. Having it in the side is better than not, in my opinion, and it's better than droplet. And Duster and Reboot are explanatory; they're just they're limited to one. Well, uh, in final thoughts, anything you would say about this LCS event experience? Yeah, overall, it was it was a Fun experience. I I I enjoyed playing Yu-Gi-Oh online. Um, it, it's not the it's not a good replacement, but it, it it'll make do. I I want to get back to playing Yu-Gi-Oh in real life for sure. But 
I, I a great organized event. Connie did a great job. Um, thank you to him and thank you to everyone else that helped us out, the mods and anyone else that, you know, put it put in some effort and work towards it, you know, I appreciate that a lot. So yeah, overall greatly ran tournament. I'm 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 happy with the results. I I couldn't be I couldn't be happier. I won. Well, uh, thank you for being a guest here on the channel, man. Alrighty, man. Thank you. And listeners, if you're not a part of Bortle Nation, sub for Bortle. It's that easy and it's free. Oh, God, yes. Yes, yes.